Welcome to The Rule. Today is Saturday, which is our sneak peek Saturday, and I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into how I go about collecting. When I was gathering my notes for this show here, I was going pretty deep into all sorts of directions, so I need to narrow it down just a little bit, just a touch here. I'm going to go with the preface that this would be the sealed product I would like to purchase that it keep on hand, retain it as sealed, and only concerning a new set release. We can't venture off into the fact that if there's a reprint for 151, I'm probably going to do a little bit, all right? That's just the reality, because I know what that set's going to be in the long term, at least I have a good feeling about it, and uh, I would like to add more to my collection in that way. We can't do that. It gets a little too dicey, too dangerous. Before we dive fully in, I want to give you that opportunity for that giveaway, the Galarian Articuno tin from Crown Zenith, two three-pack blisters from Stellar Crown, and a Pokemon Mystery Prize going out to four lucky winners. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell because I post seven days a week. And if you want, if you're feeling up to it, the channel's doing well, it's getting some traction, but I think you could do better. If you could share it out on the different discords you might be a part of, if you're putting it out and you're following things on X or anything like that, uh, I would love the support in that way too, and just sharing what we have going on here at V-Roll, especially posting seven days a week. I think there's a little something for everybody. Uh, to enter, though, make sure you go to the video listed in the description below. That has a link to the original video where we're pursuing that goal of 2,500 subscribers to do the giveaway of these four prizes. That is a long-winded explanation on an intro just to get to the point of diving into my brain and how we go about collecting on new sealed products. So, the upcoming set... Surging Sparks, let's dive in. Over here we have uh, Zulus. It was just a good way of breaking it down. These are not the costs I would always be going with, but uh, it does kind of show you a little bit of what you can expect. I have my cost analysis on the back end to showcase what I would be expecting as far as an investment on the deals I'm typically able to find at this stage in the game. So Surging Sparks booster box. I'm going to go in and think through it, see where I can buy it, but two is my target. Two booster boxes. I would love to be the guy who could buy two cases, open a pack or two here, a box rather, or two, have an entire sealed case, and then a few extra boxes uh, left over, but uh, the financials are just not there yet. I try to be realistic and I want to be honest with you of how much I'm willing to pour into the hobby because you get so many channels that just go nuts and they're spending like crazy and you don't really know what's realistic, how they can do that, and often it's funded by their channel. I would love to get to a point of monetization of this channel and then pour back into the channel with that financial advantage, but until that happens, this is the strategy I've been going with as a personal collector on my own investments two booster boxes. I buy them, keep them sealed. If I'm really itching to open, I try not to go with a third booster box, although I have been tempted lately. Stellar Crown looked tempted to do so. Surging Sparks looks like one I'd be tempted to do so. I'm going to try to hold out for the ones in 2025 that I'm really, really excited about to maybe take that extra step, that extra cost on board here. Uh, moving along here in ETB, these take up a little bit more space on the shelf, they take a little bit more space in your storage, but if I can pull off handling two of these in my collection as well, that would be the goal there on a regular ETB. Uh, they have it here at 40 bucks. I've seen it for less and we'll go over that cost breakdown. Now if you can get a little bit of a discount by bundling things, there's an opportunity to do some savings. Here at this one 40 mark. Uh, it's about what I'd be looking for anyways on my cost breakdown, so uh, this could be a good option and things to consider in your search that if you're going to go that route anyways, maybe 100 today is doable, 140 is a little bit tight, uh, save a little bit and then come back around to it because you might get the better deal instead of doing 110 on a booster box and then 40 on a ETB and now you're spending that extra $10. So uh, save a little bit and then work your way towards that goal and make sure you have that available to spend. Uh, taking it a step further, in some occasions, not all, but some occasions, I have been doing the three-pack boosters here, uh, three-pack booster blisters, rather, uh, and usually if I'm going to go for it, I get this set. I do one of each just to have it together, but specifically I target it if there's going to be a promo that I would find value in. These are printed to, you know, crazy amounts, but... They are a dime a dozen at a certain point, and the value of that Pokemon card can go up. Uh, not high, not crazy, I wouldn't bank on it, but as a sealed product, it can do well, and the promo can weigh that one direction or the other. If you don't believe me, let's look at Evolving Skies and think about those three-pack blisters there. Uh, the pack value is what's going for it, and that set and how much it's gained. However, the Umbreon promo is really elevating that three-pack blister versus the Ice Q 
promo, all right? So there's a difference just on the promo inside. The packs inside are really apples to apples because it's the same set, same release. So something to consider here that may or may not come into play depending on the set. With Zapdos, I would consider uh, this getting the set of the two there, one of each. So that brings you to these newer bundles that are not as common. We saw them coming up uh, around Stellar Crown a lot. Big time on Surging Sparks, I'm seeing them everywhere. And more and more sites are popping up with these bigger bundles to try to entice you to get the better deal, but also get more product and raise their price a little bit across the way. Now, this kind of hits home in a few different ways. If I were to get two of them, we got to consider where that puts it price-wise. And now I'm getting a duplicate here that I wasn't anticipating. I'm getting two of these booster bundles that was never in the equation. Things to think about. And again, we'll break down that cost analysis in a moment here. Lastly on the list is going to be Pokemon Center ET. Elite Trainer Box. So uh, my limit here is one. One is my limit. Most of the time, that's enough for me. Buy it, keep it sealed, put it away, done. Uh, I'll get it in a case, and then I put it away. So done to go there. Now, there are some sets that kind of look like they have a little bit more going for them, so I might get an additional, making it two. And then there's those gut feeling sets where it's like, this is a set where I pulled the trigger, I went for four, for Pokemon 151. That was the last time I did four. Prior to that was Crown Zenith. I think, yes, the singles are coming down a little bit, but I think long-term Crown Zenith is still going to be a high-value set and do pretty well, so I think those are pretty good buys having gone that route at the time. When we're looking at Surging Spark specifically, Pikachu on the box, obvious contrast, yellow, purple. It really pops. It really looks good. It created a lot of excitement. We also have a little bit of the contents to consider here in this promo. Okay, same artist as the Giratina from Lost Origin, same artist as the Magikarp from Paldea Evolved. You have to consider what does that mean. So that Magneton, I think, is going to be a little bit higher value. It's part of the 151, you know, original Pokemon. So it's going to have a little bit higher value in long term as a Pokemon Center stamped promo. For that reason, multiples was in the equation for this particular set. So... I'm going to put the cost analysis saying one because that's usually what happens, and then I take it a step further beyond that. But for my typical buy-in, uh, I have those considerations. Other things I kind of consider when I'm looking at Pokemon Center ETBs, what's different? Something's different. Let's take a recent one, Shrouded Fable. Still available, not an exciting set. Pull rates are blah. The actual pulls are <laughs> just not that exciting for the most part. You know, you get the Persian or the Hondoom, okay, great. But outside of that, I don't know. Uh, it's a little bit rough set there. However, it's really interesting artwork on the box. You have three Pokemon depicted. That's not common. In fact, all I could find were four other previous Pokemon Center Elite Trainer boxes where they went ahead with multiple Pokemon. Everything else shows one. And let's just take a look at those. Peldea Evolved. A set that's doing quite well, especially on the Pokemon Center Elite Trainer box. You have Evolving Skies. We all know where that's at. It's through the roof, but a very nice designed box on the Pokemon Center Elite Trainer box. Hidden Fates, another great one. You take Shining Fates and Hidden Fates. Hidden Fates wins every time. You bring in Paldean Fates. I think Hidden Fates still wins. Multiple Pokemon on the box. Interesting. Cosmic Eclipse has really skyrocketed. There's a lot of good stuff going on in these sets, but that little thread of that box design taking it to another level, it really does add something. And that's what we're doing with these sealed products. So something like Shrouded Fable, where it seems a little lackluster as a set, I think the box artwork itself, and especially the Pokemon Center version, uh, just because it's got that stamp promo, because it has those extras, that little bit higher value to start with and lower population overall, I think this is going to do well where I did purchase an additional. I bought two for that. Uh, even though I was not excited about the set, I thought that the Pokemon Center Elite Trainer Box would be a good way to go. No booster box, so I didn't have to worry too much about that additional expense there. Moving along into that 151, one where you can kind of see it. This is going to be the kind of set that brings people back in. This is going to be the kind of set that people are going to want to open no matter when you came into Pokemon because you have the big players. You have Charizard. You got Snorlax promo in there with the Pokemon Center stamp. I think that's going for 50, 60 bucks right now. So you have a lot going for it, and it was pretty easy to tell. Really clean, simple design. All the little different silhouetted Pokemon like you get on the poster and all that. Snorlax very prominent in the center, but there it is, just big, bold, 151. That's what we want to see. That's the kind of thing that you have to look for, pay attention to, and then you can make that decision. Is it worth getting an additional? Is it worth getting multiple? I don't know. Could be. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't for you. Let's stick to my standard, though. 
all right I'm gonna be looking into this bundle a little bit as far as a cost analysis but let's just do the typical breakdown of what I'd be going into here a booster box at 10497 that's the typical price I can find two of them bringing you 20994 an ETB just a regular ETB coming in about 35 bucks all right so almost 70 on that for two of those the three pack blister it's one of each promo artwork so two at 11.99 bringing it to almost 24 and the Pokemon Center elite trainer box again typically I would just get the one so there's about 60 bucks. When you total this up, change and all, everything, we're at 363.89 as far as sealed products for the set. If I were to go in a different direction, like uh, a bundle right here that we see on Zulu's for that 179.99, now I'm gonna need two of those to fulfill the two ETBs, the two booster boxes, at least that here. So let's bring that into play and break out two of them at 359.98. There's other stuff to go over, and we're getting there in a second. The Pokemon Center ETB, bringing in home $60, bringing us a total of $419.97. That's a difference between what I would normally do and a bundle that I might justify for a set like this, a difference of $56.08. Now, let's see where that justification comes in and what it really means. Two of these three-pack blisters would not typically be in consideration, so we're going to deduct that price. And what else am I getting on that difference here. So less three pack blisters, two of them pulling out that $24, leaving us a total of $32.10 difference for the booster bundles themselves. All right. So there's two booster bundles in this equation coming out to a cost breakdown of $16.05 each. That's a pretty good deal, especially if you want some pack opening experience. So what I could do is fulfill my regular collection and then I have two three-pack blisters to open and two booster bundles to open to give me a little bit of a taste of the set and some of that pack opening experience. I've battled with it for a while and the more I've gone down into my collection journey, the less I enjoy opening packs, and that's just me, because I rip a pack with nothing in it and I go, there's $3, there's $4 gone. I rip a pack and I get a hit and I go, that's wonderful. Oh, it came out to two bucks. So there's another $2 gone. And my mind starts floating around the math, yes, is it awesome when you pull a big hit? Is it awesome when you get the value of a card outweighing the packs you just opened? Absolutely. And can it happen? Sure. It's happened on this channel many times. And it happens to so many people all the time. And I get that the pack opening experience is part of the fun and part of the collection experience of the Pokemon TCG altogether. If you're playing the game, pack opening experience, doing some of those build and battle boxes in an early release, a pre-release, uh, is a really great way to go to have some of that excitement and then start looking to how you can refine a deck as you go into your journey of playing the TCG. So I'm not discrediting that part of this entire space. All right, The franchise has done well in creating a lot of different facets from the actual Pokemon video games to collecting sealed products to getting cards graded and having master sets, all the things. I'm not discrediting any of that. But for me personally, opening packs has become less exciting and more of a burden financially where I'd rather put it into the investment side and enjoy that because whether I open it or not, I still have that product, I still have that piece, and it has value which typically is retained or growing. So it becomes a little bit more exciting in that way, viewing it and holding it as an asset rather than opening it and it becomes a liability. That's just me uh, and where I've become in my journey. So it can be good to open stuff, and something like Surging Sparks I think would be exciting. So this ladder idea here, putting it up in that 419 and working out the difference for some pack opening experience at a pretty good discounted rate, I think fulfills the collection and gives me some opening opportunities that I otherwise wouldn't normally do in a set. And with this one in particular, I am kind of excited about the cards I'm seeing, and we haven't even gotten that much of a release out of it of what's coming. I think this is going to be geared up as a pretty decent set going into the Christmas season and kind of priming us for what's to come in 2025. So I hope you got some value out of this and just kind of seeing what I do to collect. Uh, I'd love it to be in the thousands of dollars and all these amazing, amazing products, but I really do try to tighten the belt a little bit and really restrict myself as far as what I'd be going after and why. 
Uh, and this just scratches the surface. I can't believe how long this video is just scratching the surface on this topic of the few products that I personally seek out. And I'd love to know your story, your journey, and what you do. What is your typical buy on a new set release? What are the few products you always go after? Is Booster Box King for you? Do you want to make sure you get the Pokemon Center Elite Trainer Box? What is it you go after? Are you only interested in the singles once it's out? Because ultimately that's going to be a little bit cheaper to go with nine times out of ten on most things rather than getting so much sealed uh, if you're into it for just the opening experience or just the cards so i'm curious leave that down in, in the comments below of course like the video and subscribe to the channel for your chance to win that galarian articuno tin from crown zenith two three-pack blisters from stellar crown and a pokemon mystery prize going out to four lucky winners go back to the beginning i explain how to do it uh link in description below that'll help you get there too so uh yeah oh hit the bell I'm here all the time. Share this. Let people know that this channel exists seven days a week. I mean, I post every day. So with that, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.